Happy Sabbath. To the, today the mission report comes from Uzbekistan. The topic is one broken string. So we learned last week that uh, a hard for mission the topic is and we learned that Artyom was a Artyom was small about five years old and he went to the seventh day Adventist church with father and grandmother a few times in Uzbekistan. Lastly uh, he decided that Artyom, when he is in 22 years old, he has biggest desire to help many people prepare for Jesus' soon coming. So, today the topic is One Broken String. Arthur got, got baptized in Uzbekistan when he was five. 
but he didn't know anything about god no one spoke to him about god or took him back to church after his baptism even though he never thought about god he began wearing a cross shaped earring when he was 14 he thought it looked cool but arthur told his mother that he wanted to learn and play a guitar mother took him straight to a music store arthur's life was aimless and she thought that a guitar might give him some purpose arthur picked out a brown electric guitar at home he found some guitar lessons but he, try, he started to trying to try to play it, it wasn't easy pressing down on the strings hurt his fingers but after a few days the pain began to subside his music however didn't sound anything like that of the youtube teacher artyom was offered guitar lessons he said i need a string i need to change a string as string was spoiled artyom gave arthur his home address the address sounded familiar arthur wondered where he had heard it then he remembered his mother used to work with a man named pasha at that address the two had built furniture together pasha had died are you by any chance pasha's son arthur asked yes i am artyom said the next day artyom replaced the guitar string afterward he asked arthur if he knew how to play arthur tried to show what he had learned on youtube as arthur learned to play the guitar he began to spend time with artyom out of outside of lessons he learned that artyom was a global mission pioneer a missionary who shares the gospel with people in his own culture Artyom accepted invitations to go hiking with Artyom and other adventists in the mountain. When listening to them sing songs Artyom played along on the guitar. That summer Artyom Arthur went to an adventist youth retreat in another city. He was caught off guard when a retreat speaker has the attendees to split into pairs to pray. He said that I am an atheist. He told the first person who offered to pray. The person went away. Arthur also told the next person who came over that he didn't believe in God. Moreover, he added, "I have never prayed before." This person didn't go away. We can fix that, he said. He thought Arthur to pray. Eight months have passed since Arthur started attending church regularly. He has been studying the Bible and he wants to give his heart to Jesus in baptism. He is glad that. the guitar was broke i believe in god because of the broken guitar string he said part of this quarter 13th sabbath offering will help the seventh day adventist elementary school in uzbekistan thank you now we will have a special song by snehan group offerings will be collected ಜೀವಿತ ಮಂತ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿರಾಶನನ್ನೆನ್ನಡುತ್ತಲೆದು ನಿರೀಕ್ಷಣತು ಅನುದಿನಂ ಸಾಗೆದನು
are very powerful. They can build people up or tear people down. Well, I have always heard that stones and sticks may broke up. Well, that's a fun saying, but unfortunately, it's not true. I don't know about that one. I got hit in my head with a rock and it hurt like a crazy. We heard the part about sticks and stones is true, but I sometimes words can hurt even more. I don't know that that word very pretty. Well, the thing is that we have to watch what we say. But words seem so small compared to sticks and stones. Well, they are small, but they are very powerful, which exactly the Bible talks in the book of James chapter 3 verses 3 to 5. Can you read it for me, please? James 3 chapter 3 to 5 verses. When we put when we put bites into the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take sheep as an example. Although they are so large they are driven by strong winds, they are st steered by a very small rudder, whatever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boots. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. But I am not a horse or a boat or a horse. No, but those things are all controlled by something really small. Horses have a small bits in their mouth that steers the direction they have. And large boats are steered by a small rudder. And even the huge forest fire all starts with a small spark. I have seen those before. I guess, I know, I thought about it that way. And this verse talks about our tongue. It's just a small part of our body, but it controls our words and can make a huge impact. But we say something wrong, can't we just take it back? It's not that easy. Let me demonstrate this for you. Can you give me some water? So, pouring water into this glass is like saying kind words and everyone is happy. But if I pour this same water into this mud, 
can you can you bring this water back no it's really hard to bring the water back exactly that's what speaking unpleasant words is like once you have said it it's really hard to bring them back exactly i mean i guess i've said sorry but the damage is already been done and we need to think before we speak our words are very powerful and they can make a huge impact so what did you learn today i learned that my words are a pretty big deal and sometimes they do damage even worse than sticks and stones and it's probably smart to think before i speak and say kind words instead exactly at last i want to conclude with a verse which is taken from book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that may impart grace to the hearers so from today we we'll try to speak good words which will be benefited for us and for our hearers thank you thank you all now we'll have a special song by 12th class day scholars and this will be our closing song
సమయంలో ఏమవుతుందో అని ఆలోచించావా ఆలోచించావా ఉపదేశం ఆలోచించావా ఏ సమయంలో ప్రభు పిలుపుందో అని
a very good morning and happy Sabbath, Church. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. So, uh, before we get into our lesson study, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, may thy children come into thine presence to worship thee and praise thee. Thank thee for another wonderful Sabbath that you have gifted in our lives. We had one more opportunity, one more chance to get into thine sanctuary, to learn about thee, to think about thee, to live a life that is desired in your own ways of heart. As we all bow our heads, as we all meditate upon thine word, we request thine presence, uh, thine wisdom to be showered upon us. We will understand your word and implement that same in our own lives. As is we immerse us in the most powerful name of Jesus. So, uh, for today's lesson, uh, the title that we have for this week is The Central Issue That is Love or Selfishness. The Central Issue That is Love or Selfishness. If we look at the last week lesson, uh, the title or else the whole lesson was around the war that happened in heaven between the Saturn and the God. So, how did that actually happen? How did that broke actually? And what were the consequences as human beings that we face in the present world? So, today's lesson is more about the consequences that are being faced by the humankind. What are we going through? What are the effects that we have as Christians in our own lives is the major concentration. So here, in this, today's lesson, the concentration is towards Jerusalem, one of the most loved cities throughout the Bible, throughout Jesus' journey. And how did it be destroyed? How was it brought down to dust? Uh, why did that really happen and how is the great controversy uh, really connected towards that is the question that we have today. So our uh, memory text this morning is Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, let's get to the story of Jerusalem first. Why did Jesus, looking at Jerusalem, wept and said these words? It says, As sure as I say to you, not one stone shall be left there upon another shall not be thrown down. In Matthew chapter 24, if you see, the whole story explains how was Jerusalem attacked, how was it brought down to dust, and why did it really happen? How was centuries of centuries of being affected with it? So if you see the title of today's lesson, it says, the central issue is, is it love or selfishness? If you see, Saturn's biggest uh, deceiving nature to let people know is, uh, to let God's people know is, God is selfish. God is very centric towards his own feelings. He wants certain things to be done and it should be done. He kind of declares God into dictatorship. He kind of displays God in a very different uh, image. He does not uh, accept or he does not display the love of God in a very true way. And that's where the actual war has begun. That's where there is difference between God-fearing people and someone who does not believe in God. Because the influence of Satan is so strong on those people that they cannot see the very loving nature of God. So the actual and the greatest controversy is this. So the same thing was implemented to work Jerusalem. Even in the times of Jesus, probably centuries after centuries, God have tried to explain them. God wanted them to repent and come back to Him. But none of these things have happened. 
So if you look at our Sunday's lesson, it is titled saying, a broken hearted Savior. It says, a broken hearted Savior. You see, Jesus sat on Mount of Olives and he says, his heart was broken in uh, John chapter 1, verse 11. John chapter 1, verse 11. He says, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. See, that very uh, frame of dialogue it says, he came to his own. He means, he came to his own people and his own people did not receive him. It is something that comes out of a great pain, uh, broken his feeling, to, to say something of such sentence. If you even as a family, probably as a father gets into his son, and if his own son does not receive his father, and if his own son does not show or reciprocate the same love towards his father, that is a very broken feeling that a father could have. So here Jesus was experiencing the same. So to get to know what was his experiences, how did he feel, what did really happen, let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 19 verses 41 to 44. Luke chapter 19 verses 41 to 44. I'll read it out for you. It says, As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side and they will dash you to the ground you and the children within your walls they will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of god's coming if you look at the very first verse of 41 it says he approached jerusalem saw the city he wept over it. Let's remember this. He wept over it. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 and 38. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 and 38. It says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you, you who kill the prophets, stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as hen gathers her chicks under her wings, you are not willing, look at your house, is left to you desolate. He says, I have longed to gather your children together. So in the first verse, it says, he wept. The second one, he says, it says, I have longed to gather your children together. The second thing. The third thing, uh, John chapter verse, sorry, John chapter 5, verse 40. John chapter 5, verse 40, it says, Yet you refuse to come to have life. Yet you refuse to come to have life. Let's look at these three different verses here. And the first one, he says, he wept. He, he, he started weeping by looking at Jerusalem and looking at the destruction that was coming upon it. He wanted his people to understand what was the destruction that was coming upon. He even said in that sentence, even if you wanted to make peace, you're still blind. Let's start implementing this same thing in our own lives these days. As Christians, as followers of Christ, are we very clear? Are we visible of the future uh, implications of the future wrongful doings towards Christians, what's going to happen? Because it is very clear in Bible, you know the how would the end look like? W what would be the, uh, say, uh, creation, how would it uh, start acting like to be? You know, each and every single segment, how would the world look like when the Almighty arrives towards this earth? So are we clear? Uh, are we still blind like people of Jerusalem? Because if you're still blind, if you're still behaving the same way, make sure Jesus is still weeping, looking at you and me. He's still that broken-hearted Savior, not able to uh, 
have the confidence that he could save you or else you could be back in his own kingdom. That's one. The second thing that we read in Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, it says, he wanted to gather all his children together under his wings. As Christians, are we able to be in one? As Christians, are we able to be under his wings, under his presence? That's the second question that we need to ask ourselves. And the third one, John 5.40, it says, it says, you didn't come to life. You refused to accept the real life. Living away from Christ is not called life probably with my own assumption because it does not give you any sort of a meaning. It does not give you that brief understanding. How would your life turn after a certain point? You can only understand things. You can only implement things in your own life when you start understanding who God is. So it, it, the Sunday's lesson, the title itself, it says, A Broken-Hearted Savior. So I just wanted to put one question right across. It says, what does these verses tell you about Jesus' attitude towards his people and their response to his loving invitation of grace and mercy? And what revelation of God's characters do you see? Do you see God's character here in love or in selfishness? Because when the destruction came upon, uh, when the army was slaughtering the people of Jerusalem, men, women, children, thousands, tens of thousands were being killed. Probably there's always a question that we could ask our own selves. Why is the good God allowing something of such to happen to his people? Often as human beings, when something goes wrong in our life, we ought to question God back. I've been faithful to you. I've been good to people. I haven't led my life in a very wrong way. I was always been on the right side. I, I have always trusted you. But why are you allowing such things in my life? You probably lost one of your most loved one. You lost a job. You lost the hard-earned money of yours. You lost your own peace. You lost the good name that you have. While such circum while you're put in such circumstances, yes, each and every one of us, we ought to question God, why is this really happening to us? So with this question, with this question, why me? How do you really define God's image? Do you say God is love or else do you say God is selfish? Anyone to answer? or anyone to have some sort of an imp uh, show some light, how do you portray or how do you see God's character? Anyone? Let's make it easier. Is God love or is God selfish? So when you say God is love, then how do you answer this question? When God is love, why is he allowing certain bad things to happen in our own lives? What is the reason behind it? Why should the most loved city, Jerusalem, should be slaughtered in bread? Why is it should be brought down to dust? God could have stopped it, right? It should have been a single a snap of his finger. He could have wiped out the whole army with his own angels. But why did God allow certain things? To happen in Jerusalem? Why is God allowing the painful things to happen in our own lives? Why isn't he stopping? When we all believe that God is love, God is not selfish, why are these things being allowed in our own lives? What do you have? Because every one of us, for 100% sure, we have experiences here. Bad things did happen to us. Unfair things did happen to us. But how are you reciprocating it back? How are you letting God know? Thank you, God, for letting this happen in my life. You're truly loved. Are we having such of a nature? Why is God allowing it? Anyone to throw light on it? And why is God allowing it? Yeah. It's dependent upon our power of choice. God, God he has respect our choice. And because during the time, Jewish people, they rejected Messiah. 
That's the main thing. And we too, when we reject Christ, ourselves, we go to in that, in that trap. So that's the reason that God allows our power of choice. And it's Wonderful happened. point. Uh, he says, it is our own choice of choosing our own lives. And we have those replications of falling out. If you see, when we say God is love, the last week lesson, it was very clear. Love is pure. Love does not come to you with boundaries. Love comes to you with freedom. It's always freedom of choice. You can choose the way you want your life to be. And you will have those drawbacks whenever you face it. So God's very, uh, if you see his, his own image, he says, I can see the destruction that Jerusalem is going to face. But it did not come out of surprise. Did the destruction come out of surprise? No. The people of Jerusalem were cautioned. The people of Jerusalem were being told for centuries to centuries to get back to God. But they denied it. They chose to be rebellion. Or they chose to be rebellious against God. When they did choose it, they need to face whatever they had to take it on that certain day. So you can never question God, why this bad is being happening to me. You probably, before questioning God, you need to start questioning yourself. Did I allow this certain thing to happen in my life? Even when this certain bad thing happened, I'm still here. I'm still standing upright. It means you still have God's presence in you. If you turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 to 20. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15 to 20. It says, so when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judah flee to the mountains. Let no one of the house stop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their clock. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your fight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. Even in the midst of this destruction, God is still giving them certain hope, certain instructions. So what instructions did Jesus give to his people to save them from coming destruction of Jerusalem? So this is the question that we have uh, in the lesson study. But I wanted to reframe the question. What instructions did Jesus give you and me to face this world and to face the coming world as well? What sort of an instructions do we have? Is an instruction given to us to show love? Is an instruction given to us to be bounded in love? Or else... Do we have any instructions to be selfish, to be centric of our own being, to take care of things that we own like to do? Because Jerusalem, people of Jerusalem did the same, and they had their consequences. But Jesus yet have given them an instruction saying, these are the things that you should not be doing to save your own life. So even a broken-hearted Savior is still being with you. Are we able to reflect that back to Jesus is the question that it uh, probably each and every one of us should be answering to our own selves. This is our Sunday lesson. Uh, if we move on to the Monday's lesson, it says, Christians providentially preserve. Christians providentially preserve. If you see, God's mercy, grace, providence, foreknowledge are clearly, are very clearly relieving in the events that were happening in Jerusalem. It was very transparent. You could look through those things, that events that are being taking place. If you see, there were few Christians who heard to him and who flee from Jerusalem while these events were taking place. There was none that could have touched them. There's none, even the Romans army or else the other armies who have been uh, persecuting Christians were not able to reach out to them. 
because there was mercy, there was preservance, there was grace on these people. If you turn your Bibles with me to Psalms chapter 46, verse 1. Psalms chapter 46, verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. It says, God is our refuge, our strength, and a very pre present help in trouble. Also, can you turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10? It says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What does this verses tell about God's providential care? If you see the two verses, the first one says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the trouble. And the second one says, do not be afraid, do not be fearful. I'm going to lift you up with my righteous right hand. When you, when, you, <coughs> when you look at these two verses, what sort of God's providential care do you point out at? Anyone? What, what sort of... Let me, just give me two things that you understood out of these two verses. How do you look at God's care in these two verses? No one? No one doesn't see anything that shows you the God's care in those two verses? Okay. Uh, if you look at the first verse of, of 41, 46 and 41 of Psalms, it says, God is a refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. When we love a person, when you trust in a person, when you start building up a very strong relationship, it is always that person that you reminds you when you're in a trouble. For example, I love my dad so much, I get into some sort of a trouble, my first immediate phone call would go to him. I'm stuck here. I need your help. Because that's the relationship that I have with him. And I truly believe he has that certain care on me. And he is my first help in any sort of a trouble that I land myself. So that's your first care that God shows you. Now the second verse that is Isaiah 41.10. It says, in whatever situation you are, how bad your situation might be, the moment you start depending upon me, the moment you start turning around to me, my righteous right hand shall be upon you. You see, he is very concerning towards you. You're not just called a Christian because of the religion that you were brought in. Probably uh, because you come to church, you're not called Christian. A religion is very temporary. Probably it only differentiates your lifestyles. It only differentiates, uh, say, the customs or else uh, the, the way that uh, we do things differently than the other people. But you're called Christians because you're children of his own. So as a father, it is always his providential care towards you. He is your first help in whatever trouble you are. When the Christians in Jerusalem were in trouble, he has given them the instructions that could help them to save their own lives. And some of them, few of them, have took those instructions. They fled themselves from that certain location and they were saved. And his righteous right hand shall be always be upon you. Whatever the situation might be, uh, how badly you're stuck, he says, I'm going to stand with you right there. My righteous right hand is upon you. So Christians will always have this providentially being preserved in their lives. But the only thing for you to understand this providential care or to have God's presence in your life is only by depending on him. If you do not have that very strong relationship as children 
the sort of relationship that you have with your parents as uh, brothers and sisters the relationship that you have with your own siblings is still lesser when it's compared to god you got to have a very strong bond until and unless you do not build up that strong bond you will be always on the losing side but not on the winning side so as christians it is given to us it is a gift that god has given to us that my providential care shall be always be preserved upon you so that's our uh, monday's lesson and if we move to tuesday's lesson it says faithful amid resurrection faithfulness uh, i guess it is one of the strong inbuilt characters a christian should always have being faithful having faithfulness is very important but here if you turn your bibles with me to acts chapter 2 verses 41 acts chapter 2 verse 41 it says then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them about 3000 souls acts chapter verse 4 41 sorry i accept the four verse four it says but many of those who had heard the word believed and the number of men that came to, to about 5000 and 31 verse also says and when they prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with holy ghost and they spoke the word of god with boldness so in choose this lesson it says faithfulness amid persecution as christians when you're faithful when you carry this bond of faithfulness in middle of very bad circumstances how do you reflect yourself to the present world if we just look at the verses that i have just read in acts it says there were very too many challenges there were too many drawbacks that were happening in the new testament times but how did christians in faith grew so big so rapidly if you see in these verses it says the disciples faced threats the disciples faced imprisonment the disciples were even killed sometimes even amongst that certain times there was faithfulness that they were showing up if one was dead the other disciple took it up went into the world spread the gospel and made sure their faith towards god was delivered in a very right way so that the numbers started multiplying the church started growing so the question here is as a church as adventists as we as a community what is our faithfulness towards our own god we live in a very uh, tough times how many of you agree with me you do not agree that you all think that you were living in good times no so you all agree right i hope everyone is awake so you all agree or else probably you are the most happiest people saying hey everything is looking fine then i'm sure you're not on the god side then you're on the other side probably you're also like just people of jerusalem thinking everything is going fine no it is the it is very tough times that we are in and if you see this tough times does not see any resolution coming in the future no this is going to be tougher it's going to be harder in the coming days but as a church as a church how do you take this up because for sure either it be the political influences either it be different religious activities christianity would always be a topic of concentration a topic of debate to happen you as christians will be against someone without a fault that's going to be future of christians 
but as a community as a church how do you show your faithfulness are you going to be afraid fearful of these things and would you turn your back and run away or else would you stand strong would you stand still saying i have a god who said his righteous right hand would be upon me he said midst of trouble i can still look at him i can still walk ahead so are you going to have the same courageous feelings that these disciples had in the new testament times are you going to still fight the failures are you going to still fight the so called political influences the so called the external world the so called uh, the gen z world that we live in are you going to fight these things stand as a christian and would you be able to spread the gospel if you say yes what are your plans towards it what are your plans how many of us as its members of this church did even give a try or else did even put a little bit say about 10% effort in spreading god's word did you ever speak to a non believer saying hey have you ever known about jesus did you ever read bible did you did you did you all at least give them a passage out of a bible did you at least give them a memory text out of bible did you ever try to have that not did, did we ever as a church have been built like that how many of you agree on this is the place adventist church is rapidly growing are we multiplying rapidly are the empty benches being filled the church has 100 years of uh, if i'm not wrong yeah it, it has a history of 100 years so in 100 years probably this institution have given out so many people out there they're well settled they are in good positions now uh, there are many stories that we hear there are many people who are a living witness who sit in his church saying that we are out of this own institution but we grew as people in this institution but as a community did we create an any sort of an impact in this so called small town nasapur did we reach out to people did we bring out a community in a bigger way because in churches we see there are too many issues that people fight on people fight for offerings people fight for positions people fight for too many different things in our adventist churches but a strong question that we get out from this is faithful amid persecution how faithful member are you of this community how faithful adventist member are you are you helping this church to grow rapidly are you able to spread gospel are you able to bring at least one person to this church did you did you ever add one single soul to this uh, so called christianity are we able to do this when probably people are fearful people are afraid how how does it sound if i go and talk to a non christian about jesus would he feel bad yeah in my own personal life probably i have friends who are in hindus who are muslims i didn't make it uh, or else i did not give it a try to tell them about jesus i was very much afraid or else i was weak minded thinking probably my relationship with my own best friend would be spoiled or else uh, we might not have that strong relationship but it's not necessarily spreading gospel means you need to hold a bible pick it up and preach start preaching them no you probably it, it is not that uh, spiritual music that you bring in your own character can always differentiate your life when you have that bond of love in you when you show your own characteristics of saying no to wrong things and being on the right side people will start questioning you when when i object some things yes there were times when people asked me why do you not come out to a movie theater to watch a film with us no i wouldn't do that as a, as a uh, my parents did not teach me to do that the word of god didn't teach me to do that my church did not teach me to do that so i am differentiating myself from that crowd i'm able to create an impact 
then Christians do not watch movies. So every of my friend knows that this fellow, you plead him, you do anything, he would never enter her into a movie theater to watch a film. It is so clear to them. So the question is, if you're not able to spread gospel, are you at least trying to create an impact through your own characteristics? Because when you start showing that impact, when you start developing a character like Christ, you start differentiating you from the world, your community will start growing. People would start drawing interest and they would like to know there's a curiosity that's being developed. What happens in this church that these people are so different from us? Even in the midst of troubles, even in the midst of this very troublesome world, it is responsibility, it is a given responsibility for every Christian to have faithfulness, to show faithfulness, to build your community, to grow your community, to add at least one single soul before you die. Whatsoever the circumstances might be, you shall stand faithful. You shall start facing this world. So faithfulness amid persecution is one of the most important character that a Christian should have. That's our Tuesday's lesson. Let's shift to the Wednesday's lesson. It's again coming back to the same community. Caring for the community. This is very interesting. I loved among the whole topics that this lesson had. Caring for the community. How many of us really care for our own community? Do we all care for our own community? Uh, do we care for the people in our own community? Caring doesn't mean calling for a good meal. Probably involving people uh, while things are uh, happening all good, happy. No. How many of us really go and attend a funeral? You know, there's someone who probably passed away. You know, he's very close to you. But how many of us really put in that effort, even if it's few, it, it, it takes few hours for you to travel and go and attend a funeral. How many of us take that responsibility or else uh, take that say, he is part of our people. Let's go pay our last rights to that certain person. Let's pay our last respect to that certain person. Or else let's go wish that family, uh, tell them, be strong, we are with you. Are we caring towards our own community? I was talking about building a community. I was talking about the church need to be get multiplied, grow rapidly. But for this to happen, it says charity begins from your own home. In the same way, the building up of your community should start within your community first. So how caring are you towards your community? If you look at the New Testament in the early Christian stages, in the events that take place, people started taking care of their own community first. If you see in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Believers modeled the ministry of Christ, who went about Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness, all kinds of diseases among their own people. If you look at that very statement, among their own people, how many of us as a community do we visit each other's houses and pray for each and every one? How many of us, there's probably someone sick, do you go visit them, start praying for them? You got to start build your own community with utmost care. When you start showing up that love towards your own community, the very foundation of building a church, the very foundation of a rapid growth of a church starts from there. Because Satan starts deceiving you with your own people. He does not deceive you with an unknown person. You do not get into a fight with an unknown person. You probably might get into a fight with an unknown person, but it's mostly towards or else within your family. If you see, brothers go against their own brothers. Because I have experienced seeing so many uh, people who are very close. Probably the father expired, mother expired, they had some property disputes, 
and a brother is against the other brother. As siblings who grew with each other for almost about 30, 40 years are dead friend enemies towards each and every one of them. So that's how Saturn starts winning. Saturn is creating the great controversy, not only in heaven, but he started creating the great controversy right in our own community. I'm not very deep into Adventist, but uh, with, uh, I mean, not into the mission or else uh, not into the uh, schools that uh, I studied here, but started working somewhere outside. But my dad, I keep seeing, I keep understanding things. A community gets divided when there's a certain thing that we need to act on. We as a community do not have a care for one another. We as a community, we do not have that love. We as a community, we do not have that very strong foundation to build our own church. Building our own church does not mean having massive infrastructure. Even if it is small, are, you, are the members of that church being faithful? Because it says, caring for the community, your Wednesday lesson says, caring for the community is very important. In those days, Christianity was growing so rapid, so fast. It's because the own community had its own love. It has its own care. So as a church, as an Adventist community, do you care for your fellow beings? Are you able to create that very impact in your own community saying, let's all stand together. Because it says, as the word I have just read before, it says, all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease were being healed among their own people. You got to start with your own people first. Once you start with your own people, then the very foundation of this place church is very strong you will start seeing that growth. This number will be doubled, will be tripled, will be go four times, will go five times more when you start having a very strong community. The outside world should look at you as a very strong wall built for Christ. They should know that nothing can break this community. The moment they start observing it, Satan is finding his ways to lose the battle is not going to win over you because you have a strong community. You have people who could support you in hard times. You have people who love you. Who, there are people who could pull you out of things. So it is always important to have care towards your own community. That's a Wednesday's lesson. You know, the Thursday's lesson, it says the legacy of love. A legacy of love. Can you all turn our Bibles to John chapter 13 verses 35 and 1 John chapter 4 21. I'll read it out for you. So John chapter 13 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That is John 13, 35. And John, first John chapter 4, verse 21, it says, And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. What does this passage, uh, passages uh, teach you here? It says in the first one uh, that I've just read, that is 1335 of John, it says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple you, if you love one another. Are we able to call ourselves as disciples of Christ? Are we able to spread that so-called love towards each and every one of them? Are you loving one another? Is your love very pure? What does this passage is? The question here is, 
what does this passage passages reveal about satan salage against the government of god in the great controversy what do they tell us about the essence of genuine christianity what is the essence of genuine christianity god says if you have to love me if you say i love you god it is must that should you love your brother you should have that essence of love to call yourself the disciple of god if you see uh, probably in ad uh, 16 or o and ad 22 there were two very strong pandemics that have taken place there were people being dead there was so much of spread of those diseases very critical there was no very strong medical support but during those times there was only one community that was acknowledged and looking at that community many countries have accepted that religion and that religion is christianity you know christianity is always known for its medical efforts christianity at those times was known for their selfless acts christianity was known for the love that they showed towards people they were nursing people during those uh, sick times the diseases were spreading very uh, very ra- rapidly and there was so much of loss of life even there were people who have given up their own lives during that certain time and there were kings there were presidents there were rulers who appreciated christians and who have accepted christianity that very essence of our own religion or else of our own community is love when you fall short of it you're falling short of god you can only be called disciple of christ when you start having that love you cannot say i hate my brother we do not have a good relationship i do not like my family i don't like my siblings i do not like my friend the way he treats me but you say i love you jesus i love you god you show that reverence in presence of god it is inevitable it is it is never taken for granted god never accepts it because the very war that's broken the very war that happened was due to one person being very loving that is god and the other one being very selfish the greatest controversy have started out of only two things one is being in love and the other one is being selfish so probably the lesson going forward or else the whole the great controversy is always defined on these two things so today i bring it forward here what is that as a community can you bring a change as a community are you having that care towards your own fellow being is your church growing in these tough times are you a faithful christian are you a faithful member of this adventist community who pledge to say i'm going to build my church i'm going to do everything whatever it takes to build my own church i'm going to have a characteristic which would differentiate me from the rest of the world which makes me stand up and say this fellow is different he is coming out of a different community we always made it a point we will have saturday as our sabbath because we believed in that commandment we we have built this community based on that commandment we are always differentiated from the other christians from the sunday worshipers but if you look at the sunday worship of churches they grow so rapidly they grow so fast they probably uh, i have experienced looking at people who just started a church with 50 or 100 members now they have about three or four sessions on one single sunday they do a service in early morning again in the middle afternoon after the uh, uh, in the evening they have thousands of people attending the churches why is not the adventist community able to grow 
in such rapid numbers because we lose the care of our own community. It is important for us to stand in love, not in selfishness. When you have that very essence of uh, being disciple of Christ in love, when you start showing that love towards your people, you will start creating a change. So the greatest controversy happened in heaven, but that did enter into earth with the selfish motives. So the clear-cut answer is, it is love that can save us from whatever is happening around. So let us start having, let us start building this very essence of Christianity through love. And let us define our own lives through love. Thank you. Uh, do anyone have any questions or anyone would like to show, throw some light or else would like to pick up any points, add something? It's open for you. Anyone? I guess we're running out of time. So anyone has it? Great. So then I would request uh, a pastor of a church to offer a closing prayer. Shall we pray? Eternal God in heaven, we want to thank you for all the blessings of life. Thank you for the good night's rest. The caring protection you have granted to each one of us and made it possible to see another Sabbath in our lives. We remain grateful to you. Lord, thank you for this wonderful lesson study you have given us. Thank you for uh, using Sandesh to teach the lesson and uh, creating in him the interest to preach God's word. Care for him, use him mightily for your cause. Be with the congregation. Help all of us to have the receptive heart so that we can listen to the messages that comes to us and be drawn closer to thee. Bless the poor, sick and needy. We ask all these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank uh, Brother Sandesh for taking up the wonderful lesson. Let's, uh, if you need to go, we'll go. Uh, otherwise, we'll continue our, our uh, worship. Thank you, Brother Sandesh. Thank you all for being here for the lesson study.
Church, uh, kindly take note. I'm going to read the offering details of the last week. Uh, it goes like this: tithes, twenty-one thousand hundred and seventy-one, and thank and birthday offering, seven thousand five hundred. Ava expense offering, nine hundred and seventy rupees. Church expense offering, five thousand one hundred and thirty-eight. Sabbath school expense offering, five hundred and five rupees. Sabbath school classes that uh, all classes uh, offering 2,878 uh, grand total rupees 38,162. Thank you. Good morning and a very blessed Sabbath to, to each and every one of you gathered in this sanctuary. Praise the Lord, 148, Psalm 148. Praise the Lord, 
Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the night. Praise Him all His angels. Praise Him all His hosts. Praise Him sun and moon. Praise Him all you stars of light. Praise Him you heavens of heavens and you waters above the heavens. 5 and verse 5 let Yeho them praise the name of the lord for he commanded and they were created so on the sabbath day we are here to worship our creator god aidava vachanam kuda yehova aajneyiga avi puttenu avi yehova naamamuna stutinchinu gaaka ee oka manchi talampato memmalandarni kuda ee oka sabbath karyakramaniki aahvanisthunam kindly Take note of the prayer request that we have. We've been praying from time to time. The war victims and the war uh, between Israel, Russia and Ukraine and Russia, uh, Israel and Hamas and Ukraine and Russia and the victims of these wars. So, we have been praying for the war every war. We have been praying for the war every war. We have been praying for the war every war. We have been praying for the war every war. We have been praying for the war every war every war. And also, let's uh, continue to pray for Mr. Samuel Ganta. The family would like to thank the church for praying for him. The operation was very successful. Samuel Ganta Gariya ka sastar se hista bagane muginchon jarigin dendi pradhan che mani koru naru manandaram pradhan che alani mikteli jastna. The church is requested to pray for Mr. Ajay Bagya Rao. Uh, the nephew of Sir Sangeet, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Bhagya Rao, Inti, let's uh, pray for Ajay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Srivi, Ajay Bhagya Rao Gargunchi, Koda Mana Pradhan Lag Nyaap Kunji Eska Wali, Abeda Koda Mana Sangani Pradhan Aosatala Koryunar. Let's continue to pray for Mr. Rajesh Samson, as he had uh, undergone uh, surgery. Alage Sri Rajesh Samson Gargunchi Koda Let's continue to pray for Mrs. Prabhavati Thayagarajdi and Mr. J. Rao Kusuma, Dr. Fowler, Mrs. Laila Reddy and Ms. Hamalata and also Hamad Jyoti and, and the bereaved families of Mr. Arun Ponda and Mr. Abulu and also Rashmita, Anthony and also last night we pray for Mr. Salomon Kaligiti. Uh, he has slept in the Lord. Let's pray for the Kaligiti families as they are bereaving for the death of uh, their beloved uh, uh, father Solomon uh, in Canada. Alage Sri Mati Prabhavati Gargurunchi, Tiagarazu Adi Gargurunchi, Alage Sri Jai Raj Kusma Gargurunchi, Alage Dr. Faul Gargurunchi, Sri Mati Laila Reddy Gargurunchi, Alage Sri Mati Hema Jyoti Gargurunchi, Alage Dukkam Tho Bada Padutunna Sri Aruna Panda Gara Gurunchi, Alaga Abdul Gara Gurunchi, Maralaga Manu Nyapunjas Kaval Sindhi, Rashmita Variaka, Taligar in Fogot Guru, Duka Vadan Tonaro, Alaga Yantoni Garu, Koda Adi Bazo Bath Pertunar Ganga, Minandra Koda Pradan of Nyapunjas Kaval. Let's uh, continue to pray for Mrs. Prem Kumari, the sister in law of Pastor Isaac Kumar Rajnathala. Alaga Manasanga Kapari. I know Maradala Gargant, I know twenty Prama Kumari Gargunchkuda, Miru Nyapunjas calls in the Let's pray for Mami Lili Kaligiti as she is not keeping well. We just got uh, the news from Uday that she is not keeping well. Let's keep us, uh, keep her in our prayers and also pray for Mrs. Uh, Hemalata Injeti and Mrs. Lakshmi Buddha. Alaga Srimati Lili Kaligiti Amgar Pradhan Lagnapunjas Kondi, Upre Manika Vartamana Mandindi, Audi Kinshwara and Ogunga Naru, Alaga Srimati Hema Hemal. Hamalata Injeti Gargurinchi, Srimati Lakshmi Bondi Gargurinchi Kota Pradhan Chayas. Let's continue to pray for Dr. Jay Prakash Narayana and Mrs. Karuna Devadas Injeti and Mrs. Marthama, Mrs. Sushila Prabhakar CH, 
మిస్సెస్ ఇందిరా మిస్సెస్ మాలిని అలాగే శ్రీ డాక్టర్ జయప్రకాశ్ నారాయణ గారి గురించి అలాగే శ్రీమతి కరుణ దేవదాస్ ఇంజేట్ గారి గురించి అలాగే శ్రీమతి మార్తమ్మ గారి గారి గురించి అలాగే శ్రీమతి సుశీల ప్రభాకర్ గారి గురించి శ్రీమతి ఇందిరా శ్రీమతి మాలిని గారి గురించి కూడా ప్రార్థన చేయాల్సిందిగా తెలియజేస్తున్నాం ఐ ఆల్సో లెట్స్ రిమెంబర్ మై డాటర్ నాన్సీ యాస్ హెస్ సెలబ్రేటెడ్ బర్త్డే లాస్ట్ వీక్ అండ్ అవర్ ఫాస్ట్ హూ హెస్ సెలబ్రేటెడ్ అండ్ మిస్సెస్ బేబీ రాణి అండ్ మిన్ను Uh, she is celebrating uh, celebrated her birthday yesterday and many others who are who are celebrating their birthdays like ranjita and other other little girl past year yaka kumarte alage baby rani gar teacher baby rani alage isaac sir kontha mandi ninna puttina dinanni jarupukunnaru varu bedal gurinchi kuda meeru prarthanalo gnyapakam chesukovalsindiga teliyestunnam we shall continue to pray for sugith chinta and the elders and retirees of our church అలాగే మనం జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోవాల్సిన ప్రాముఖ్యమైన ప్రార్థన అవసరత సుగీత్ చింత అనే యవనస్తుల గురించి అలాగే సంఘ పెద్దల గురించి పదమ విరమణ చేసిన వారి గురించి కూడా మనం జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోవాలి లెట్స్ రిమెంబర్ ఫస్ట్ సీఎం జే సువర్ణ రాజ్ ఆస్ ఈస్ నాట్ కీపింగ్ క్వైట్ వెల్ సీఎం సే సువర్ణ రాజ్ గారి యొక్క అనారోగ్యం గురించి మీరు ప్రార్థనలో జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోవాల్సిందిగా తెలియజేస్తున్నాం అండ్ దేస్ ఎ రిక్వెస్ట్ కమింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ది అమేజింగ్ ఫ్యాక్ట్స్ Pastor Doug Batchelor is visiting India and he will be in Hyderabad uh, main church in central church uh, during 2 to 4 of month of May um, any one of you are planning to be there please plan and pray for his visit to India um, amazing fact director gar anuvanti Doug Batchelor gar aina mana bharat deshaniki raabothunnar ganaka చక్కటి వర్తమానాలు అందించబోతున్నారు కనుక ఆ యొక్క బిడ్డ గురించి మీరు ప్రార్థనలో జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోవాల్సిందిగా సంఘానికి తెలియజేసుకోవడం జరుగుతుంది లెట్స్ ప్రే ఫర్ ఫ్లేస్ అడ్వాంటేజ్ కాలేజ్ చర్చ్ అండ్ స్కూల్ అండ్ ఎస్పెషలీ ఫర్ ద లాంచింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద బిఎస్సి నర్సింగ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ అట్ ఫ్లేస్ ఆ ప్లేస్ సంస్థ గురించి కళాశాల గురించి అలా పాఠశాల గురించి ఇందులో జరుగుతున్న కార్యక్రమాల గురించి అలాగే రాబోతున్న ఆ బిఎస్సి నర్సింగ్ ప్రోగ్రాం గురించి మీరు అందరూ ఖచ్చితంగా ప్రార్థనలో జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోవాల్సిందిగా సంఘానికి తెలియజేయడం జరుగుతుంది అండ్ ద చర్చ్ టర్మింగ్స్ విల్ బి యాజ్ యూజువల్ బట్ దిస్ వీక్ వీ విల్ హ్యావ్ ఏ వై దోస్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ద థియాలజీ హూ హ్యాడ్ నాట్ షేర్ యువర్ టెస్టమనీస్ యూ విల్ బి షేరింగ్ యువర్ టెస్టమనీస్ టు నైట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ రికమెండేషన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద చర్చ్ పాస్టర్ ద కాలేజ్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ pastor isaac kumar this evening those students who have missed you will be sharing the testimonies in the ay program 5 to 6 mana sangha karyakramalu yada vidhiga na jarigutayandi aa pramukhyamaina gamanika evaraithe sakshalu inka panchukoledo theology department vidyarthulu vaaru kachithinga ee yokka sayandra kala samayam jarigipothunna ay program lo meeru panchukobothunnaru daiche siddha padalsindiga మీకు సంఘం తరఫున తెలియజేయడం జరుగుతుంది ఈ యొక్క వర్తమానము చర్చ్ పాస్ట్ గారు ఖచ్చితంగా చేయాలని సంఘానికి విన్నవించారు ఇది ఖచ్చితంగా చేయాల్సిందే సెవ్ స్కూల్ నైన్ ఓ క్లాక్ అండ్ అవర్ లెసన్ స్టడీ నైన్ ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ టు టెన్ ట్వంటీ అవర్ డివైన్ సర్వీస్ అట్ టెన్ థర్టీ ప్లీజ్ టు టేక్ నోట్ అలాగే మధ్యవారం ప్రార్థన ఆరున్నరకి ప్రారంభించబడుతుంది శుక్రవారపు ప్రార్థన ఏడు గంటలకు ప్రారంభించబడుతుంది అలాగే సబ్బాతు బలి తొమ్మిది గంటలకు లెసన్ స్టడీ పాఠము తొమ్మిది నలభై ఐదు నిమిషాలకు ప్రారంభించబడుతుంది డివైన్ సర్వీస్ పదిన్నరకి ప్రారంభించబడుతుంది థ్యాంక్ యూ వీ హ్యాడ్ ఎ వెరీ సక్సెస్ఫుల్ ఫాస్టింగ్ ప్రేయర్ సెషన్ లాస్ట్ నైట్ అండ్ ఫాస్ట్ సైడ్ వీ విల్ కంటిన్యూ కే యాజ్ ఆన్ వెన్ దేర్ ఐ నీడ్ అరైజ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫాస్టర్ ఫర్ టేకింగ్ ది ఇనిషియేటివ్ ఆఫ్ కండక్టింగ్ ది ఫాస్టింగ్ ప్రేయర్ సెషన్ గత గత రాత్రి కాల సమయంలో జరిగిన ఉపవాస కూడిక విజయోత్సవమైనది మనకు కనబడతా ఉంది ఆ దీన్ని మనకి ఇక్కడ ఎలా చేయడానికి పునుకున్న వారిని దేవుడు దీవించి ఆశీర్వదించిన గాక ద ఫ్లవర్స్ దట్ యు సీ ఇన్ ద ఫ్రంట్ దే ఆర్ వెరీ బ్యూటిఫుల్ గుడ్ కాంబినేషన్ అండ్ వీ వాంట్ టు థ్యాంక్ ద ఫ్యామిలీ దట్ స్పాన్సర్ దిస్ ఫ్లవర్స్ మిస్టర్ అండ్ మిస్సెస్ భాగ్య రాజ్ యడ్ల ఇన్ మెమరీ ఆఫ్ దేర్ బిలవుడ్ సన్ లేట్ మిస్టర్ ప్రవీణ్ రాజ్ యడ్ల హీ వుడ్ బి ఫార్టీ సిక్స్ ఇయర్స్ ఓల్డ్ ఇఫ్ ఇఫ్ యు ఆర్ ఎ లైఫ్ భాగ్య రాజ్ గారి యడ్ల కుటుంబాన్ని ప్రత్యేక రీతిగా దేవుడు దీవించిన గాక ఎందుకంటే ఇక్కడ అందమైన పుష్పాలు మనకు కనబడతా ఉన్నాయి వీటిని మనం బహుగరించిన వారు ఆ బిడ్డలు 
మరి వారి కుటుంబాన్ని ప్రత్యేక రీతిగా ప్రార్థనలో జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోవాల్సిందిగా సంఘానికి విన్నవించుకోవడం జరుగుతుంది ఆల్సో వి వాంట్ టు థ్యాంక్ ది మోజెస్ అండ్ ఒరిస్సా బాయ్స్ ఫర్ మేకింగ్ ఇట్ సో బ్యూటిఫుల్ అరేంజింగ్ ఇట్ అలాగే బ్రదర్ మోజెస్ గారికి అలాగే ఒరిస్సా విద్యార్థులకు ప్రత్యేకమైన వందనాలు తెలియజేస్తున్నాం ఎందుకంటే ఇలాగ చక్కగా అలంకరణ మనకు ముందుకు ఇలా తేవడం జరిగింది అది పేర్చడం జరిగింది ఇవన్నీ కూడా వారి తేత ఇలాగ అలంకరించడం జరిగింది గాడ్ బ్లెస్ యూ మే ద లాడ్ కంటిన్యూ టు ఫోర్ యూ స్పిరిట్ ఆఫ్ ఆనర్స్ యాజ్ బి వర్షిప్ హిమ్ ఇన్ ట్రూత్ అండ్ స్పిరిట్ దేవుడు మిమ్మల్ని అందరినీ దీవించిన గాక మనము ఇంకా ప్రార్థనలో వెళ్తా ఉందాం As me surrender let's uh, sing with me so number 692 and the lord is in his holy temple the lord in his in holy temple the lord in his in holy temple let all the ark of silence let all the ark of silence Before If silent If silent Before Amen Salvores our merciful father in heaven we are so thankful to thee for all thy blessings we thank thee for giving us this sabbath day in our life we also thank the lord for the divine hour as we are going to meet it upon thy word we it is and over of us so that we can meet it upon thy word and receive the messages because we pray these blessings in the name of our lord jesus christ amen for our meditation let us turn our bibles to the book of revelation 1 2 3 1 2 and 4th verse revelation 18 chapter 1 2 and 4 1 and after these things i saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird and i heard another voice from heaven saying 
come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Atu Tharuvata, Mahadkaram Gala Vera Kudota, Paralokam Nundi Digava Chutu Chuchitini. Atani Mahima Chata, Bhumi Prakashin Chenu. Atadu Gopa Swarmato, Arbatinchi, Itlanino. Mahababulon Kulupoyeno, Kulupoyeno. Adi Deyam Laka Nevas Tharmanu, Prati Apavetrat Makunik Patunu, Apavetramanu, Asahimanu Naina, Prati Pakshiki Vunuk Patunu, Ayeno. Mariu, Ink of Swaramu Paralokamundi, Ilag Chapaga Vintini, Na Prajalara, Miru, Dani Papam Lalo, Palivar Pakunda Natlanu, Dani Tegulalo, Edi, Miku Pratim Pakunda Natlanu, Dani Vidichirendi. May God bless this scripture. So beginning our song, uh, song number 388, hymn number 388, don't forget the Sabbath. Start so all rise and sing song number 388, don't forget the Sabbath. Don't forget the Happy Sabbath to you all. Sabbath. I request all kneel down. If possible, stand. Hear, pray, hear, pray. Think of and bring them all. 
as thy breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord of our Almighty Heavenly Father, thank you for this privilege. Kneel down before you and some of us stand before you. Praise the name, please just name my Lord. You are creator of all the universe, my Lord. You are came to the world. Forgive our sins, my Lord. Today I am praying for the search of lies. The elders of the search, they are always praying for the church and the school and the college. So I am praying for the BS and nursing course to introduce in our college. Is planning, administrators, as business management, and other officers are planning to introduce the BS in nursing course in the flies. Solve all the problems, my Lord. Give your angels to provide the BS in nursing course, my Lord. I pray for those who are sick and suffering in the hospitals, those who are um, I see, I see in the hospitals, heal them soon, my Lord, in the such members. Samuel Ganta is also in the hospital, and so many in the hospital, my Lord. Malini, Gautamudi, Malini, remember her, my Lord. She is uh, healed very soon, my Lord. My Lord, remember the elders, Varuna, Gavdas, Martama, and Lili Kaligiti. My Lord, so many elders, my Lord. Heal them soon. Give strength to their effort, my loss. And also, I pray for uh, the students who are rotated after examinations, my Lord. Good, uh, I'm waiting for the good results of this college and the school, my Lord. Bless the administrators in this administration point of view. So many people are joined in the school, my Lord, which is very happy to say, my Lord. Bless each one, administrators and business management, my Lord. And the faculty, good faculty introduced in this college, my Lord. Bless each and every one, my Lord. Now your servant is going to preach the word of Bless him, bless his family, do the good education and good uh, word of God, my Lord. This is my little prayer. I pray into the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good morning, dear church. Before we, before our church deacons come and collect the morning offerings and tithes, I would uh, like to read two texts from the Bible. Psalms 54, 6. I will sacrifice a voluntary offering to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. Another text found in 2 Corinthians. Ninth chapter, seventh verse. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. God expects all of us to give cheerfully, because God's loveth a cheerful giver, and it is always 
good to give our offerings to the Lord. At this time, I call upon the deacons to come and collect the morning offerings and tithes. While the deacons come and collect the tithes and offerings, we have a special number present to us, uh, presented to us by Solomon Girimagiri. Solomon Girimagiri will come and present to us a special number. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Today, I'm going to uh, present a Telugu song. The meaning of the song is, when you open the Bibles, book of Joshua 1 and 6. Be strong and of good courage, for to these people you shall have it as an inheritance the land which I showed to their fathers to give them. Thank mm -hmm. you.
ಬೇಡವಾಯನು ಅನಿಶಲವೆಚ್ಚಿನ ದೇವಾ ನೀ ವಾಗಿ ಮಾರನೆ ದೀಪ್ರಭುವ ನೀನು ನೇ ಬಿಡುವನು ಬೇಡವಾಯನು ಅನಿಶಲವೆಚ್ಚಿನ ದೇವಾ ನೀ ವಾಗ್ದಾನಿಗಿ ಮಾರನಿಧಿ ಪ್ರಭುವ at this time if there are any who wish to give the special offerings thank offering and other offerings please come and place in the tray sure all right so and sing number 692 694 praise gone from world vision so all right praise gone no more blessings when you see me turn when you see me born in heaven praise from the sun let's pray for these offerings our most gracious heavenly father we thank you for this time we thank you for good night slumber and we thank you for all the care and protection at this time we brought little from our prophets please accept our offerings and bless these offerings and multiply and uh, use it for thy mighty cause we ask thee to bless all the hands who have given these offerings to you and also we pray for the people who have not given the offerings also bless them please bless our gardens and farms and protect them from pests and insects and bless all the our members and help us to give our offerings cheerfully so that you will love us and you will bless us and we pray for the people who have given special offerings and bless those little hands give them good health and wisdom and knowledge from above and also bless their parents and their relatives and please use these offerings for thy spread of thy ministry and for the gospel lord we ask these few words in jesus name amen at this time bhumika and her group will come and present us the message and song Good morning to all and happy sabbath we are going to sing one hindi song and meaning of the song is i am with you till the end of the world do not be afraid i will come again says the lord if you have any problem in your life do not be afraid i will give you peace thank you
देखो मैं दुनिया के अंत तक तुम्हारे साथ हो देखो मैं दुनिया के अंत तक तुम्हारे साथ अगर तुम ना
Uh, kindly note the flowers are sponsored by ba ba Yadla Bhagwan Raj. Yadla Bhagwan Raj. Thank you, dear children, for that special number. We praise God for this privilege that He has granted us to come to His presence on this holy Sabbath day. We praise the Sabbath day, Nana. They will not let any critics go near Nara. Our Devat Devan is the author of the list now. Every week is a privilege for each one and every one of us. We come to the presence of our Creator God and meet with Him and receive His blessings and live a life that is acceptable to Him. Prati varamu manke vakashirvada varamga parigini chabaratundi. Today, the message. The title I have chosen is the four stages of Sandela. I think this day, na na yok vartaman amshani. Adi varupu chattamu naalu gu dashalanu gurchi mito matlar chunam. God in His providence given us the warnings, and beforehand He revealed to us. They would do. Sita prapsi. Tan ananta jnana mandu mundu gane manika neke hechre kani chiyu naaru. We have a sure word of prophecy. If you read and understand these prophecies, manku thana cinema ina pravachana vakya saaram samana yadhanundi thana vakya niyadhan ches kodaan ki. If we understand and uh, the prophecies, then we need not to be terrified of those last day events. Pravachana mula niyadhan ches kona kargi natlaite. అంత్య దినాల్లో జరిగేటటువంటి అప దినాలను గూర్చి భయము చెందవలసినటువంటి అవసరత మనకుండదు శేషించబడిన సంఘములో అన్ని ఆత్మవరములు కూడా ఉన్నాయి అది ముఖ్యముగా ప్రవచన ఆత్మ వరము కూడా దేవుడు ఈ సంఘములో ఇచ్చి ఉన్నాడు characteristics of the end time church the remnant church who keep the commandments pravachana vakya saramsa manedi antya dinallo unde devuni sanghaniki undavalsina atuvanti lakshanamulo mukhyamainadi they keep the commandments of god and have the spirit of prophecy aina agnyanu paatisthu yesunu goorchinatuvanti sakshyanni kaligi undatam anedi it is the testimony of jesus christ it is called the spirit of prophecy అది యేసు క్రీస్ యొక్క సాక్ష్యాన్ని కలిగి ఉండి ఆయన ఆజ్ఞలు పాటించే సంఘముగా ఉండాలి వార్నింగ్స్ and then how we need to prepare for this crisis all these things are written in this great controversy book and now we are blessed with it. translation of the telugu books are also available for us those who cannot follow english you can read in telugu and understand and prepare for this final crisis the sunday la kabati ee nalugu dashalu ఆదివారపు ఆరాధన చట్టం అనేది ఎలా వస్తుంది అనేది నాలుగు దశలుగా వివరించబడుతుంది కదా మీకు ఈ వివరణ అంతా కూడా ఈ మహా సంఘర్షణ నేను పుస్తకంలో మరి ముఖ్యంగా ఆఖరి అధ్యాయులైనటువంటి మూడు అధ్యాయాల నుంచి దీన్ని తీసుకొని పడుతుంది ముప్పై ఎనిమిది ముప్పై తొమ్మిది నలభై అధ్యాయాల నుంచి దీన్ని తీసుకొని పడుతుంది మరి వర్తమానాన్ని నేను ప్రారంభిస్తున్నాను in the fourth stage the first stage will be refrain from work on sunday ee aadivarapu aaradhana chattam anedi nalugu dashalaga avustundi modata dashana ganika manam chusinatlaite aadivaramu pani cheyatam maani veyali ane danto prarambham avutundi here the testimony is ninth volume page number 232 to 233 then uh, counsels to parents teachers and students 550 and 551 pages basing on this we know 
we need to refrain from work on sundays when this sandhya comes this is the, the first stage is the refrain work on sundays modatidi manam chusinatlayite aadivaram pani cheyadam maaneyali ane danito నాలుగు దశల్లో మొదటి దశ ప్రారంభం అవుతుంది దీనిని మనము తో సాక్ష్యములు అనేటటువంటి గ్రంథములో తొమ్మిదవ వాల్యూమ్ నుండి మనం తీసుకుంటూ రెండు వందల ముప్పై రెండవ పేజీ రెండు వందల ముప్పై మూడవ పేజీ అలాగే కౌన్సిల్స్ టు చర్చ్ అనే దాని నుంచి కౌన్సిల్స్ టు పేరెంట్స్ అండ్ టీచర్స్ తల్లిదండ్రులకి ఉపాధ్యాయులకి ఇచ్చేటటువంటి సలహాలు ఆలోచనలు అనే పుస్తకం నుంచి ఐదు వందల యాభై ఐదు వందల యాభై ఒకటవ పుట నుంచి అది స్వీకరించబడుతోంది రెండవ దశ అనేది ఎలా ప్రారంభం అవుతుంది అంటే ఆదివారాన్ని గౌరవిస్తూ శనివారం ఆరాధన చేసుకోవచ్చు అనే దశ పేజ్ నంబర్ సిక్స్ నాట్ ఎయిట్ ఇది మహా సంఘర్షణ అనేటటువంటి ఈ పుస్తకం నుంచి ఆరు వందల ఎనిమిదవ పుట్టలో దీనిని మనం చూడవచ్చు దెన్ దర్డ్ స్టేజ్ కమ్స్ కెనాట్ వర్షిప్ ఆన్ శాబ్ ఓన్లీ సండే మూడవ దశ ఎలా ఉంటుందంటే శనివారమున ఆరాధన చేయలేము సబ్బాతు దినాన మనం చేయలేము కానీ ఆదివారమున చేయాలి అనే చట్టం వస్తుంది ఫైన్స్ అండ్ ఇంప్లిమెంట్ imprisonment will be imposed alage evaraithe aadivaramana aaradhana cheyakunda sanivarana aaradhana chestam ani cheptaro varini khaidi lo pedtaru jail lo pedtaru that is great controversy 657 607va putta maha sangarshan ane pustakam nundi and the fourth stage is the death penalty to those who worship sabbath aakari dasha emitante ఎవరైతే సబ్బాతు దినాన ఆరాధన చేస్తున్నారో వారికి మరణ శిక్ష విధించటం జరుగుతుంది మనకి ముందుగానే వేద వాక్యం చదవబడినట్లుగా ఇదంతా కూడా మనకి ముందుగానే వివరణ చేయబడుతుంది ప్రకటన గ్రంథములో పద్దెనిమిదవ అధ్యాయం ఒకటి రెండు అలాగే నాలుగు వచనాలని మనకి వేద పట్టణముగా చదివి ఉన్నాం అక్కడ మనకు తెలుస్తుంది మరి ఇది మనకి ఎలా అర్థం అవుతుంది అని చూసినట్లయితే మత్తీసు వార్త ఇరవై ఐదవ అధ్యాయంలో మధ్యరాత్రిలో వినబడుచున్నటువంటి కేక అది మనం చదువుదామండి ఒకసారి మత్తీసు వార్త ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ సిక్స్ ఇరవై ఐదవ అధ్యాయము ఆరవ వచనంలో చదువుదామండి ఒకటి నుండి నాలుగు వచనాలు కనుక మనం చదివినట్లయితే అర్థం అవుతుంది ఈ పది మంది కూడా నిద్రపోతున్నారు కానీ ఐదు మంది లేచి సిద్ధపడి ఉన్నారు అయితే 
జ్ఞాన బుద్ధిమంతుల మీద బుద్ధి గల కన్యకల మీద మనం చూస్తూ ఉన్నాం డిడ్ నాట్ హావ్ ఎన్ ఆయిల్ దట్ ఈస్ రిఫరెన్స్ టు ది హోలీ స్పిరిట్ సో ఫైవ్ విల్ బి ది లెటర్ రైన్ హోల్డ్ అవుట్ ఆన్ వైస్ అర్జెన్స్ ఈ యొక్క కడవరి వర్షం అనేటటువంటిది పరిశుద్ధుల మీదే అయితే అక్కడ మనము నూనెను చూస్తున్నాం ఇక్కడ వర్షాన్ని చూస్తున్నాం ఈ రెండు కూడా పరిశుద్ధాత్మకు సాదృశ్యముగా నిలబడుచున్నవి మరి మొదటి దశలో మనం చూస్తూ ఉన్నాం ఆ దాని తర్వాత ఈ చట్టం అనేది చేయబడుతుంది they say you okay, can take one day of rest or the angels in our mission during that time the spirit of prophecy uh, encourages us to do the missionary work when that uh, uh, restraint comes uh, restraint from work on Sundays on that Sunday we need to do the evangelism the angels in missionary work మనకి దేవుడు విశ్రాంతి తీసుకున్న అని ఒక దినాన్ని ప్రతిష్ఠించి చేయగా మరి వారైతే ఆ దినమును పక్కన పెట్టి వేరే దినాన్ని ఆరాధన చేయాలని ఒక చట్టాన్ని తీసుకురాబోతున్నారు దేవుడు జ్ఞాపకం ఉంచుకోమని చెప్తుంటే అది గుర్తించుకోవద్దని ఈ లోకంలో ఉన్న నాదులు చెప్తున్నారు so we are supposed to work on sentence when the first phase comes so at that time we are advised to engage in missionary level ee modati dasha vachinappudu manamu aadivara aaradhana anedi aaramamai adi oka chattanga maarabothundi okay the government also agrees to take one day less to do some green project works for the people రెండవ దశ మనం చూసినట్లయితే పరోక్షంగా మనము ఆదివారం ఆరాధన చేయాలని పనులన్నీ మానుకోవాలని మనకు తీసుకొస్తూ ఉన్నారు డోంట్ డ్రైవ్ డోంట్ షాప్ డోంట్ బిల్డ్ వారు ఏం చెప్తారంటే ఎక్కువ దూరం ప్రయాణాలు చేయొద్దు సకం సకం దూరమే ప్రయాణాలు చేయండి అని వారు మనకు చెప్తూ ఉంటారు రెండవ దశ ఆదివారపు ఆరాధన అనేది వచ్చినట్లయితే ఆ చట్టం వచ్చినా గానీ మనము సబ్బాతును ఆరాధన చేయవచ్చు the social pressure increases and uh, due to time of trouble i'll aithe samajika paramaina tivanti vaatini penchutu mari sabbaatu meeda ottirini teesukostaru now during this stage many seventh day adventists compromise aithe ee samayamlo aneka mandi sabbaatu aaradhikulu emaipothaarante raaji padipothaaru aadivara paaradhana tho and there comes the third stage అయితే మూడవ దశకి వచ్చినట్లయితే లోకంలో ఉన్న చట్టాలు ఏం చేస్తాయంటే సబ్బాతు ఆరాధనను వారు ఏం చేస్తున్నారంటే కట్టుబాటు చేస్తారు సబ్బాతు దినాన ఆరాధన చేయకూడదు అని వారు ఒక చట్టాన్ని తీసుకొస్తారు ఆదివారమున మాత్రమే ఆరాధన చెయ్యి అనే చట్టం వస్తుంది గవర్నమెంట్ తరఫున ఎవరైతే ఆదివారమున ఆరాధన చేయరో ఆ దినాన చేయని వారి మీద అనేక పన్నుల భారం పెరుగుతుంది అలాగే వారు రుసుములు చెల్లించవలసి వస్తుంది వారు కొనలేరు అమ్మలేరండి మరి ఈ విధంగా జరగబడుతోంది Daniel book of Daniel 11 chapter 43 and Revelation 13 17 mari ide vachinanni manam chodavachu moola paatani Daniel grandham lo 11th vadyam 43 prakatana 13th vadyam 17th vachinanni manam chodavachu it comes to the fourth stage nalugava dashiki vachi chuste the death decree marana shasanam Revelation 13 15 to 17 verses prakatana grandham 13th vadyam 15 nundi 
పదిహేడు వచ్చిన వరకు సో డ్యూరింగ్ దిస్ హోల్ స్టేజ్ ప్రొబేషన్ క్లోజెస్ ఈ నాలుగో దశలో ఏం జరుగుతుంది అయ్యా అంటే కృపాకాలం అంత ముందుతుంది నౌ ద టైం ఆఫ్ జాకబ్స్ ట్రావెల్ బిగిన్స్ యాకోబు యొక్క శ్రమల కాలం ప్రారంభమవుతుంది సర్టన్ పర్సనేజ్ క్రైస్ట్ జస్ట్ లైక్ క్రైస్ట్ ఇన్ హి పర్సనేజ్ అండ్ హి అపియర్స్ హియర్ అండ్ వేర్ సాతానుడే క్రీస్తు రూపమును దాల్చుకొని ఇదిగో నేనే క్రీస్తునని ఇక్కడ అక్కడ ప్రత్యక్షమై ప్రజలతో మాట్లాడతాడు మరి సాతానుడు ఈ నాలుగవ దశలో క్రీస్తు వలె అవతరిస్తాడు ఈ భూమి మీద నేనే క్రీస్తునని చెప్పుకుంటాడు నాలుగవ దశలో సో జస్ట్ ఐ హివెన్ యూ దిర్ జస్ట్ బికాస్ ఇట్ ఇస్ సమ్మర్ వీ కెన్ హెట్ వెయిట్ అండ్ ఆల్రెడీ టైమ్ ఇస్ ఆల్రెడీ ట్వెల్వ్ జస్ట్ మేబి టెన్ మినిట్స్ ఐ థింక్ ఐ హోప్ ఐ మేడ్ ఇట్ వెరీ క్లియర్ టు యూ దెన్ యూ కెన్ స్పెండ్ టైమ్ అండ్ రీడింగ్ దిస్ బుక్స్ అండ్ యూ విల్ అండర్స్టాండ్ బెటర్ నవ్ ఐ జస్ట్ వాంట్ టు రీడ్ వన్ ఆర్ టు పారాగ్రాఫ్స్ ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ బుక్ ఫైనల్ వాండ్ ఇన్ చాప్టర్ థర్టీ ఎయిట్ గ్రేట్ కాంట్రవర్సీ మరి మహా సంఘర్షణ అనే ఈ పుస్తకంలో నుండి మరి కొన్ని వచనాలు మీకు చదువుతాను సమయం లేదు కాబట్టి నేను త్వర తరగా వెళ్ళిపోతున్నాను రెవల్యూషన్ ఎయిటీన్ చాప్టర్ వన్ టు ఫోర్ వర్సెస్ వీ హ్ ఆల్రెడీ రెడ్ మనం ఇప్పటికే చదివి ఉన్నాం ప్రకటన గ్రంథం పద్దెనిమిదో వచ్చాం ఒకటి నుండి నాలుగు వచనములను ఓకే దిస్ స్క్రిప్చర్ పాయింట్స్ ఫార్వర్డ్ టు ఎ టైమ్ అండ్ ది అనౌన్స్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ది ఫాల్ ఆఫ్ బ్యాబిలోన్ హాస్ మేడ్ బై ది సెకండ్ ఏంజల్ ఆఫ్ రెవల్యూషన్ ఫోర్టీన్ నైన్ ఈస్ టు బి రిపీటెడ్ విత్ ఎడిషనల్ మెన్షన్ ఆఫ్ ది uh corruptions which have been entering the various organizations that constitute babylon since that message was first given in the summer of 1844 these are the big big sentences in those days challenge of white rights so translation is difficult for that reason to make it easy i have given you the telugu translation book also we can make it clear babylon kulatanni gurtinchina prakatana 14 8 yeah 14 8 lo రెండో దూత ప్రకటన మొదటగా పద్దెనిమిది వందల నలభై నాలుగు గ్రీష్మ కాలంలో వెలువడినప్పటి నుండి బబిలోను భాగంగా మారుతున్న వివిధ వ్యవస్థలు సంస్థలు దుష్ఫలితాల్ని అదనంగా పేర్కొంటూ మళ్లీ ఇదే ప్రకటన భవిష్యత్తులో పునరావృతం కావలసి ఉన్న కాలాన్ని ఈ లేఖనం సూచిస్తోంది మతం ప్రపంచంలో చోటు చేసుకున్న points forward to a time and the announcement of the fall of babylon as made in the second angel revelation 149 revelation 14 chapter 9th verse is already preached uh, in 1844 summer so the same thing will be repeated this 18th fourth angel message will be repeated uh, so this message uh, it's the second uh, angel message that was already పద్దెనిమిది వందల నలభై నాలుగో సంవత్సరం గ్రీష్మ కాలంలో అంటే ఎండాకాలంలోనే ఈ యొక్క పద్దెనిమిదవ అధ్యాయంలో ఉన్నటువంటి పెద్ద కేక అనేది అంటే ప్రపంచ వ్యాప్తంగా క్రీస్తు రాకడకు సిద్ధపడండి అని పిలుపుని మనం విని ఉన్నాం చోటు చేసుకున్నటువంటి ఆ మహా దిగ్భ్రాంతి పొందినటువంటి ఆ దినము గురించి మనకు తెలుసు but yet the message is proclaimed during that time william miller garu tana sahajarulato kalisi prapancham anta kuda rendava raakada vastundi prabhu vastunnaru yesu prabhu varu parishuddha stalam nunchi ati parishuddha stalaniki vellaru ante ee bhoomi prakshalanam cheyabade samayam vastundi adi october 22va tarikuna jarugutundi ani anchana vesi prabhu raakada appudu jaraga jarugutundi ani vedri chudatam jarigindi but the spirit of god by uh by the grace of god god has given the spirit of prophecy to the reverend church prophetess ellen g white was chosen and through her we received 
enlightenment on these prophecies we understand that during that 1844 and october 22nd jesus christ did not come to this earth but he has entered into the most holy place to begin investigate the judgment అయితే వారు ఊహించినట్లుగా ఆశించినట్లుగా అక్టోబర్ ఇరవై రెండవ తారీఖున పద్దెనిమిది వందల నలభై నాలుగవ సంవత్సరంలో ఏసు క్రీస్తు వారు ఈ భూమికి దిగి రాలేదు కానీ ఆయన పరలోకంలో ఉన్నటువంటి దేవుని మందిరంలో ఉన్న పరిశుద్ధ స్థలం నుంచి అతి పరిశుద్ధ స్థలంలోనికి ఆయన ప్రధాన యాజకత్వాన్ని చేయడానికి పరిశీలన తీర్పును తీర్చడానికి ఆయన మొదలు పెట్టినట్లుగా కొంత చిన్న గుంపు ఆ బైబిల్ని చదవటం ప్రారంభించినప్పుడు దేవుడు వారికి దర్శనములు ఇచ్చారు ఆ దర్శనములు అనేక మందికి వచ్చినవి అందులో ఎలంజీ వైట్ గారు ద్వారా దేవుడి దర్శనాలనిచ్చి ఈ సంఘాన్ని ప్రోత్సహిస్తూ ఈ సంఘ సంస్థాపన చేయడానికి సహకరించారు మన యొక్క సంఘము అనేది ప్రవచనం ద్వారా ఏర్పడినటువంటి సంఘం ఇది it is uh, not by, because of their human efforts idi manushudu yerpaadu cheskuna siddhantamu kaadu manushudu yerpaadu chesinatvanti sangamu kaadu idi our foundation is based on the prophecies our church came into existence mana punadi anedi pravachana meeda veyabadindi by fulfilling the prophecies we came into existence so we need to be very very careful and be conscious that we our church is the true church that god has called దేవుడు స్థాపించినటువంటి నిజమైన సంఘము మన సంఘము అని మీరు జ్ఞాపకం ఉంచుకోవాలి చాలా జాగ్రత్తను వహించాలి అలాగే నేను ప్రభు మనకు ఒక పనిని అప్పగించారు ఆ పని ఏంటంటే త్రిదూత వర్తమానాన్ని ప్రకటన చేయాలి పద్దెనిమిదో అధ్యాయం రెండవ దూత వర్తమానాన్ని చూసినట్లయితే ఎంతో బలము కలిగినటువంటి ఆ వేగవంతమైనటువంటి విధంగా ఈ ప్రకటన చేయబడుతోంది అయితే ఇక్కడ ఈ భయంకరమైనటువంటి పరిస్థితిని గురించి ఈ ఇక్కడ మనకి వివరించబడుతోంది and trust in an infidel hard hardihood prati okkaru kuda satyanni aneka mandi satyanni nirakarinchi vaaru hrudayanni katina parchukuni satyam edala vaaru kopanni chupistaru in defiance of the warnings which god has given they will continue to trample upon one of the precepts of the decalogue until they are led to persecute those who hold it sacred అయితే సత్యాన్ని నిరాకరించేటటువంటి వీరు దేవుడు ఆజ్ఞలైనటువంటి ఈ పది ఆజ్ఞలు ఒకదాని వెంబడి ఒకదాని నిరాకరిస్తూ కడికి అన్నిటిని కూడా వారు నిరాకరిస్తారు and the provision of religion will become a cloak to conceal the basis of iniquity a belief in spiritual manifestations open to the door to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil and thus the influence of evil angels will be felt in these churches great controversy 603 page 603 second paragraph second paragraph yes sir. ప్రపంచం అతి భయంకరమైన సమస్యను ఎదుర్కొనసవాల్సి వస్తుంది ఈ లోక పరిపాలకులు దేవుని ఆజ్ఞలకు వ్యతిరేకంగా పోరాడడానికి ఏకమై కొద్ది వారి గాని గొప్ప వారి గాని ధనికులు గాని దరిద్రులు గాని స్వతంత్రులు గాని దాసులు గాని అందరూ తప్పుడు సబ్బాతు ఆవరణలో సంఘముతో కలిసి రావాలని శాసనం జారీ చేస్తారు ఈ శాసనానికి విధేయులు కాని వారి అందరికీ జరిమానాలు చివరికి మరణ దండన విధిస్తారు మరో పక్క సృష్టికర్త విశ్రాంతి దినాచారమును కోరుతూ దాన్ని అతిక్రమించే వారిపై దేవుని ఉగ్రత పడుతుందని దైవదాస్ ధర్మ శాసనం ప్రకటన చేస్తోంది our sins have reached unto heaven and god hath remembered our iniquities revelation 18:5 yes 
ఆదివార ఆరాధన చట్టం వచ్చినప్పుడు మనము కూడా యాకోబు అనే దేవునితో పెలుగులాడి విజయాన్ని సాధించారు and the heavens and seems to uh, to encircle each praying company the angry multitudes are suddenly arrested when the magic comes to life the hearts of the world and the cities are forgotten with fear and fervor for the days the days of all the symbol of God's power and long to be seen and so on for in brightness so what happens ఆరు వందల ఇరవై నాలుగవ 
Churchill's man or the Republic of the Saviors as the conservation of the of our hopes. It's also put, I put it in the film also. Now the great deceiver will make its appearance that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, certainly man was used among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness, resembling with this description of the Son of God, given by John in Revelation uh, 1st chapter 13 to 15. The glory that surrounds him, surrounds him is unsurpassed by anything that mortal eye has not yet behind. The short of time brings him upon the air. Christ has come, Christ has come. You can read on the screen. You can read next.
అపోస్ట్ కార్యక్రమం చూస్తున్నటువంటి ఈ గార్డెన్ చేసేటటువంటి సైమన్ మేగస్ అనేటటువంటి అతను ఎలాగైతే ప్రజల్ని మోసపరిచాడో అదేవిధంగా దానికి మించినటువంటి నయవంచనతో సాధారణ క్రీస్తు రూపాన్ని ధరించి క్రైస్తవ అనేక మందిని క్రైస్తవ వేతనం అనేక మందిని మోసపరిస్తాడు అయితే మన ప్రధాన రాజకీయ వారి చూస్తూ ఉన్నాడు క్రీస్తుని బట్టి క్రీస్తులో మనం పరిపూర్ణంగా పరిశుద్ధులుగా మారాలి చేస్తూ మన కొరకు ప్రార్థిస్తున్నారు కాబట్టి మనం ఇప్పుడు క్రీస్తు స్వారంభ్యంలోని పరిశుద్ధులుగా మారడానికి ప్రయత్నించాలి not even by a thought would our savior be brought to heal to the power of temptation and this is what our sister all of the people who are in this world are not able to heal the heart of the human heart sometimes where he can gain hold some sinful desire in search he search by means of which his temptations assert their power సాధారణ ఏదో విధంగా ఏదో ఒక వంచన చేసి ఏదో ఒక శోధన తెచ్చి వారి శక్తిని మనకుపరచుకోవడానికి సతవిధముల ప్రయత్నిస్తారు మన హృదయంలో ఏదో ఒక చిన్న లోపం చిన్న బలహీనత పై మనము పాపం చేసినట్లయితే మనల్ని సాతాలు లోపరుచుకుంటారు అలాగే క్రీస్తుల మనం చూసినట్లయితే ఆయన మానవ తారగా జన్మించినప్పటికీ ఏ ఏ ఒక్క మోసానికి కానీ లేక ఏ శోధనకి లొంగిపోలేదు the prince of this world cometh and had nothing in me john put it that jesus said okay the prince of the world is coming i have nothing to do so satan could find nothing in the son of god that would allow him to uh, gain the victory he had kept his father's commandments and there was no sin in him that satan could use to his advantage this is the condition in which those who must be found క్రీస్తు చెప్పబడినట్లు కానీ సాధారణంగా ఎన్నో విధాలుగా క్రీస్తుని ఓపరుచుకోవడానికి ప్రయత్నించారు కానీ ఆయన ఓపడలేదు రాజీపడలేదు ఆయన తన తండ్రి ఆజ్ఞాన్ని ఆచరించాడు సాతాను ఉపయోగించుకోవడానికి ఆయనలో పాపం కనబడలేదు ఆ ఆపత్ కాలంలో నిలవ నిలవాలని దైవ ప్రజల పరిస్థితి ఇలా పరిశుద్ధంగా ఉండాలి ఏ విధంగా అయితే క్రీస్తు వారు పాపానికి లోపడలేదో ఆ విధంగా దేవుని ప్రజలు పరిశుద్ధంగా ఉండాలి మరి దేవుడు ఈ విధంగా మనం నిలబడి శ్రమ కాలంలో కూడా పరిశుద్ధులుగా ఉండేటటువంటి సామర్థ్యాన్ని శక్తిని మాకు అనుగ్రహించి దీవించి నడిపించును కాక
to bring the service to a close of this turn on English hymnal to hymn number 590 when we walk with the Lord when we walk with the Lord
One name in every week is consecrated, consecrated, is blessed, is hallowed, is set aside, so that, O oh Father, we can set aside other things and come and worship you, O oh Father. Sabbath is a sign between you and your people that we are your people, that you are our God. But Satan doesn't want this identity that we have. He wants to steal this identity that we belong to you and you belong to us. That's why the very commandment that begins with remember the Sabbath day. Today many preachers are saying, forget it. Today, through the service, through the sermon of Dr. Nathaniel, you remind us that the devil is going to use a false day of worship to deceive the whole world and even to accuse those who keep the day set aside, O Father. But we thank you for Jesus Christ, who is ever there to help us in our Sabbath keeping. Our Sabbath keeping will never take us to heaven, but our love for Christ and for his commandment, O Father, our commitment to keep the word of Jesus Christ would enable us to be with Jesus in heaven. This afternoon, we pray, Father, the four stages, and the stage number one, stage number two, stage number three, is already set aside in some countries. And it's going to be very soon, maybe after these elections, in Andhra Pradesh and in India. The stages will be implemented soon, O Father, and very soon. Jesus will come. Help us to prepare us, ourselves, our families, and also others, Lord. Jesus is very coming, coming very near. But, O Father, we are far from his kingdom. Please help us to keep our differences aside. Help us to keep pride aside. Help us to humble ourselves before your throne of grace. Oh, Father, help us to prepare for your soon coming at all times, not just on Sabbath day, O oh, Father. Thank you for the promises of your blessings. When we are faithful to you, you will give us victory. You will change our characters. You will change our words. You will change our names like Jacob, O oh, Father. Help us to be faithful to you even in the Jacob's time of trouble. We pray, Father, that you bless each and every student that is present here. I, I pray, Father, that you bless each and every staff and faculty, the retired workers of our, 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 our denomination and other uh, places, oh, Father. We pray, Father, you will be with the present working force, the administrators, and the staff and faculty. Help us. The only work that you have assigned us to do is to preach the three angels' message to warn people that your kingdom is coming very soon, that your judgment is coming very soon, and to worship you and to fear you at all times. Thank you, Lord. Send us with your blessings. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Amen as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 This is the coming of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.